we're here it's almost dark we got about 15 minutes left and we noticed that we have a small swarm on this peach tree this peach tree is about five years old so it's not producing yet we trimmed it down pretty hard this winter but we got a swarm that's gathered up right here now if we left this swarm here they might be here in the morning but they also might all the bees might head back to their original hive and the queen might head back there too and hang out on the side of the hive or she may just fly off so what wow. we're going to do right now an extreme thing that could happen i'll tell you is a skunk a raccoon or some type of predator could come during the night and see these bees and they'll actually eat honeybees them too okay but what we're gonna do here is we have this hive I'm just gonna scoop them up put them in the hive you can use a frame and spray it with sugar water you can put honey on there I don't really want to put honey on the frame and scoop them because sometimes the bees will get stuck their wings will get damaged and we'll lose some of them so they aren't really concerned with what's going on here the darker it gets the more defensive they will get and i'm just gonna see how they act we've already taken some honey this is honey from two years ago and it's it's crystallized and i'm just gonna show you guys so this is just crystallized honey and i've just been wiping it on frames and also piling it up at the bottom of the hive they're, they'll go in there and they'll see that this is in there and then this will also give them reserves to build up a new colony and basically what they're do what they'll be doing is while they're eating this honey it's the carbohydrates for energy and that will give them the energy to build up comb and also work to go forage for nectarine and other resources that they'll need in the hive like pollen and nectar I said nectarine nectar that they'll need to grow not only brood but also the colony in general so here we go I'm gonna lift up this whole hive and actually see if we can fit it and you'll notice here I'm gonna start being a little bit more quiet I put an entrance reducer in and I nailed it and that's to keep them more inside while we're going through this process and I'm moving them. Right now I'm gonna I'm gonna touch them and see if they're gonna be offensive. If you ever have the opportunity to catch swarms you always want to stay calm and the, and the bees can sense fear and anxiety and so if you go in trying to rush things or hurry through or even if you're afraid I personally am fearless so just staying very calm is the key you also want to be calm because you don't want to damage the queen even a hurt leg on a queen could really slow her down in laying and I'm talking from possibly 200 eggs a day to even 600 and that would really be detrimental for the hive its longevity
I can sense the bees are starting to get a more comfortable and they're not aggressive or defensive yet, but the sun is going down and they're moving. I'm actually going to just leave them here. I think anything else that we do will potentially make them get upset or defensive. And that could put me in danger if I was not a professional in doing this, but we want our bees to be comfortable, not only with their beekeeper, but in general. And they will be more healthy, the less stress that they have. We have this bee box here. We have the hive ready. The queen might be down in there. And I think she is because you can see bees. Look at this bee right here. That bee is sending signals and these other bees are flapping their wings. And I think if we stay here long enough, the queen is down there and all these bees are gonna go down in there. I'm just gonna scoot this over here. And this is what's gonna happen is these bees are gonna go down in here. The honey's down in there, the frames. Reagan, would you hand me those frames? Once they get in there, I'll come and flip this lid over, put these other frames in there, cause they'll be filled up. And what I have is a, I have a queen excluder and I was actually gonna put that on top so they don't build on here. And then I'll put a cloth. I'll take this off and put a cloth insulation on there. I like those better than top covers. And then we will move them in a day. We'll, we'll probably just move them 50 yards in the other direction, a little bit away from the road and uh, our, our sprinting. We like to do our sprints here. We're gonna move them away from there. They're all gonna go down in there and we're gonna have a good colony. This is a little bit bigger. I said it was a small swarm, but they were very dense and it's cooling off. So that's why they were together so much. They were in there keeping that queen warm at 98 degrees. And you'll see, they're just checking me out to make sure and I got, they're aggressive towards black. They keep coming over here on my tattoo and checking it out. That's what they're doing into my armpit hair because uh, that's why I got my hat on because they're aggressive to black and that's instinctive for black bears. We like to, uh, ideally I kind of trim my hairs down because we just don't want to send that signal to uh, get them defensive. And I'm gonna just see if I can snap this off. And... And there's another, there's some more leaves that they're on. And that's where I had to break that one and get the big, large group of them. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna push this over and leave about an inch or two. I'm gonna put a rock on top of here to make sure that the, the, the wind doesn't blow the lid off. But we're gonna get this swarm. And I'm Michael Severe, Challengers Farm. Thanks for watching.